over the place. Another key term is precision, which is a measure of how close the experimental results are to each other. If the results of an experiment are precise, then the experimental method is reliable. In this video, we will explore factors that affect the reliability of an experiment and ways to improve the reliability of results. Even if we have performed our experiment correctly, we might get slightly different results each time. This is due to random errors. A random error is an error that has variable size and direction. That is, random errors affect experiments in unpredictable ways. For example, let's consider Robin Hood. Even though Robin Hood consistently hits the bullseye, his arrow hits a slightly different spot each time. Each shot differs in direction and distance from the centre of the target. We cannot predict exactly where his next arrow will hit because these differences are random. These slight variations in Robin Hood's shots are due to random errors. He is a reliable archer since the size of these random errors is very small. On the other hand, Fluky Luke demonstrates a very large random error. His arrows might hit above, below, or to the side of the target. He might hit close to the bullseye, or he might miss. Fluky Luke is so unpredictable that he cannot shoot consistently, so he is not a reliable archer. Let's consider another example. Suppose that you are trying to weigh a sample of cobalt chloride using an electronic mass balance. You need to weigh the sample six times. On Monday, you manage to take three measurements. However, you run out of time to finish collecting data, so you store the sample safely. As we can see, the measurements taken on Monday only vary by 0.01 to 0.02 grams. We can judge the random error of our experimental measurements by comparing them to the resolution of our measuring instrument. The resolution of an instrument refers to how well the instrument can distinguish between two similar values. In this case, the mass balance measures weight in increments of 0.01 grams, so it is quite accurate and has a high resolution. If you would like to revise this, please see our earlier video on accuracy in HSC chemistry skills. Since the differences between the measured weights are about the same as the increments of the electronic mass balance, 0.01 grams, we can say that the random errors are small. This means that the results you recorded on Monday are reliable. On Tuesday, you return and weigh the sample three more times using the same method and equipment. This gives you the following measurements. As we can see, the differences between these measurements are large, from 0.04 to 0.09 grams. These differences are much larger than the increments of the mass balance, so these results have been affected by large random errors. This means that the values recorded on Tuesday are not reliable. Perhaps we should repeat the experiment again and collect new, more reliable measurements. So where does this random error come from? As the name implies, it is caused by variables that vary randomly between trials. This includes things like temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind speed, and the masses and volumes of reagents that you use in an experiment. Let's see how this applies to a chemical reaction. Suppose that we are trying to find the time taken for a 2 cm length of magnesium ribbon to react with 50 ml of 1 molar hydrochloric acid. We perform three trials and get slightly different results each time. When we repeated the experiment, we might have used slightly different amounts of magnesium. In the third trial, we might have accidentally cut 1.9 centimetres of magnesium ribbon instead of 2 centimetres. After all, it is quite hard to accurately cut 2 centimetres 
if we're using a pair of scissors? If so, the slightly smaller amount of magnesium would have caused the reaction to be completed faster. Similarly, we might have measured out 49.5 millilitres instead of exactly 50 millilitres of hydrochloric acid for the first trial. If so, the reduced amount of acid would have caused the reaction to proceed slower. Even though we try to repeat experiments exactly the same each time, there might be minor changes in our experimental setup or conditions which can affect the final result. We'll discuss this in our upcoming videos on validity in HSC chemistry skills. Now, how do we reduce the effects of random error on our experimental results? Assuming that we do our best to perform an experiment exactly the same each time, there are three main ways that we can do this. Firstly, we can increase the number of trials that we perform. Instead of taking just one measurement, we should collect as much data as possible. So, how many trials is enough? This depends on the experiment that you are doing. Three trials should be considered the bare minimum for an experiment at school. However, you should always try to collect five or more data points to check the reliability of your data. Let's go back to the example from our first video on reliability. At the archery competition, Fluky Luke's first arrow hits the bullseye. If we looked at this first arrow alone, we'd have come to the incorrect conclusion that Fluky Luke was just as good as Robin Hood. When he fired two more arrows, we saw that he wasn't very consistent. What if, for every three arrows he fires, one gets close to the bullseye? That would make him a half-decent archer. To be sure about this, we should ask him to keep firing arrows. After enough time, we'd find out that he's got a lot of room for improvement and his first shot was beginner's luck. The second way to reduce the effects of random error is to remove outliers from our results. An outlier is a result which is abnormally large or small. Outliers may be caused by extremely large random errors, making them much bigger or smaller than all the other data points. The only way we can spot an outlier is by collecting lots of results and comparing them. For example, let's consider Robin Hood's archery history over the past five years. As expected, the overwhelming majority of his shots land in the bullseye. But what's this? He completely missed the target during practice last Tuesday. This looks like an outlier. We have to find some way to justify this poor performance on Robin Hood's behalf. If we go back, we'd see that Robin Hood was distracted that day. Someone threw a fake rubber snake on the ground next to him, which made him miss the target. This is a reasonable excuse, so he can keep his reputation as the most reliable archer in all of England. Let's go back to the experiment where we measured the time taken for magnesium to react with hydrochloric acid. The results that we've collected show a fair amount of variation, differing from two to six seconds. Since the first three results weren't very reliable, we repeat the experiment another three times. But for some reason, the last measurement is completely out. If we compare it to the other results, we can easily conclude that it's an outlier because it's much larger than all the others. Why did this occur? Perhaps we forgot to clean the beaker after the fifth trial so that some of the old reaction solution was still in the beaker when we did the sixth trial. If so, the hydrochloric acid solution would have been diluted to a much lower concentration and the reaction would have occurred more slowly. In any case, we should ignore this outlier when performing calculations. This brings us to the third method of reducing the effects of random error, which is to calculate the average of repeated measurements. The average is calculated by taking the sum of all the measurements for each trial 
and dividing by the total number of measurements. When we average our results, the values that are too large will cancel out the effect of the values that are too small. Therefore, any variation caused by random errors will be smoothed out, giving a more reliable result. The more data we collect, the more reliable our average becomes. However, when we calculate the average, we must exclude any outliers from the calculation because they are unreliable. Let's see how this applies to the experiment where we measured the time taken for magnesium to react with hydrochloric acid. Firstly, we need to remove any outliers. Then, we find the sum of all the measurements and divide by the total number of measurements, which is 5. Finally, we round the average to the correct number of significant figures. Each time is given to two significant figures, so we round the average to two significant figures. This gives us 35 seconds, which is a reasonable answer. The values that were too large cancelled out the effects of the values that were too small, giving us a reliable final answer. Now what would happen if we were to include the outlier when calculating the average? This would give us 38 seconds, which doesn't match up with most of the measurements that we've taken and is too large. Therefore, it is important that we exclude outliers when calculating the average. This is particularly important when doing titrations, which is covered in Module 6, Acid-Base Reactions. Let's look at the type of questions you could be asked in exams about reliability. Once again, these are usually asked in the context of a practical investigation, with questions asking, are the results reliable? Why or why not? How can we improve the reliability of an experiment? And how has the investigator improved the reliability of the experimental results? The answers to each question will vary, depending on which experiment you are asked about. In general, you should think about what random errors are present and how you can reduce the size of these random errors. Before we finish the video, let's look at a sample question. Marie analysed a can of soft drink to determine the mass of sugar it contains using the following method. Pause here to read the method for yourself. How could the reliability of Marie's experiment be improved? Pause here to think about your answer. Remember, there are three main ways that we can improve reliability. By repeating experiments, removing outliers, and calculating the average of repeated measurements. Marie has only taken one measurement, so she cannot calculate an average or spot outliers. That means she'll need to repeat the experiment and collect more data. Option D does not mention repeating the experiment, so this is obviously incorrect. If we think about it, soft drinks typically contain water, carbon dioxide, sugar, colours and flavours. When Marie heated up the soft drink, all the water evaporated, along with the carbon dioxide. That means she measured the mass of a mixture of sugar, colours and flavours. The colours and flavours are the impurities. Option D refers to removing the impurities and finding the mass of sugar by itself. However, this is related to the concept of accuracy, which is how close the measured value is to the true value. That is, how close the measured mass of sugar and impurities is to the true mass of the sugar without impurities. If you would like to revise this, please see our earlier video on accuracy in HSC chemistry skills. Therefore, option D is incorrect. Option C says that Marie should repeat the experiment using water. However, if she evaporated all the water, she wouldn't have anything left. This is called a control, where the experiment is performed in a way to test if the method is correct. A control improves the validity of an experiment and has no effect on its reliability. 
We'll discuss this in our upcoming videos on validity. Therefore, option C is incorrect. Now we are left with two options. Option A says Marie should repeat the experiment with the same soft drink. Meanwhile, option B says she should repeat the experiment using different soft drinks. When we repeat our experiment to improve reliability, we should follow the same experimental procedure each time. Therefore, Marie should continue to analyze the same soft drink. If she does this, she can check if the mass of sugar in this soft drink is the same every time. However, if Sarah was to analyze different types of soft drink, then she can only compare the mass of sugar between these different types. For example, fizzy grape might contain lots of sugar, while diet fizzy grape might have very little. These results don't correspond to the same type of drink, so she hasn't improved the reliability of her experiment. Therefore, option B is incorrect, and the answer is option A. Let's revise what we've discussed in this video. Reliability is the degree to which a measurement or test gives consistent results each time the experiment is performed. The reliability of an experimental procedure can be reduced by random errors. A random error is an error that has variable size and direction. Random errors are caused by variables that vary randomly between trials, such as temperature. We can reduce the effects of random error by increasing the number of trials we perform, removing outliers from our results, and calculating the average of repeated measurements. An outlier is a result which is abnormally large or small. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on chemistry, check out our first video on validity.